What'd you say? Oh, no, I'm sorry. Not, no, not 21.2. Those won't be on there. On the test, maybe, but not on the quiz today. Yeah. All right, we'll work 21 and 22 anyway. The length, width, and height of a rectangular prism it can be represented by the expressions x plus 3, x plus 7, and x minus 1. Surface, uh, yeah, you won't have to know surface area. Okay, so to know if you did it right, so surface area is all, it, it's all the areas of the faces added together. <coughs> so you've got this rectangle. Yes, time, yeah. So here's this three-dimensional rectangle. Yeah. So I've got, we'll call this x plus 3. We'll call this x plus 7. And then we'll call this x minus 1. Okay. So for surface area, you'd have to take the area of each face of the rectangle. And then add them together. So I've got this area and this area. Then I have the front and the back, right? Are y'all following me? Get off there. And then you have the top and the bottom. Does that make sense? All right, so let's do the top and bottom first. What's the area of one of, because they're the same, the top and the bottom have the same area. So what's the area of the top and the bottom? So look, at, based on what I put up here, you could have made your size anything, but it's x plus seven times x minus one. Do you agree with that? Why? All right, so it's x squared minus x plus seven x minus 7, which would be x squared plus 6x minus 7, right? That's how, that's the area of the top and the bottom, right, Rhett? Is that what you did? <coughs> so now let's look at the sides. So this is left, right. So the little green squares, right? That's going to be x plus 3 times what? x minus 1. All right, that gives me x squared minus x plus 3x minus 3, which is x squared plus 2x minus 3. I've got one more set of sides because a square or a rectangle in 3D has six faces on it, right? Go back to geometry. All right, so I've got top and bottom. I've got left and right. What do I need? Which sides? Front and back. So that, uh huh, there you go. So x squared plus 3x plus 7x plus 21, which would be x squared plus 10x plus 21. Now, that's the area of each face, right? But then Rhett said, do we times them by 2? And I said, yes. Why do we times them by 2? There's two of each. That's exactly right. Look at left and right is easiest for me to see, I think, the one that's, that's in green. One of those greens is this, but there's two of them. So I have two of x squared plus 2x minus 3. And then I'm going to add to it two tops and bottoms. And then I'm going to add to that two here of the top and the bottom. Now distribute through, I hope y'all are correcting your work, 2x squared plus 4x minus 6 plus 2x squared plus 12x minus 14 plus, where am I getting all these numbers, Rhett? Bro, I asked you a question and you haven't even broke stride to know what I asked you. What do I do now? Add them all together, combine like terms. How many x squared? Uh huh. Thank you. 
Mr. Plus, what did you say? Point two. What'd you say? Get the quiz. Ready to do it. Yeah, but if you keep going to the right, it goes to the elementary school. Right there. On the main road. Because the elementary school is like four miles away from the store. No, it's not. It's about 30 seconds. It's a new car. 45. It's not four miles. It's not even a mile. All right, we'll time out for polynomial analysis. All right. So yesterday we talked about some polynomials and we talked about how we classify them based on their oh. Okay. Um, oh my gosh. So we talked about how we, we named a polynomial based on its degree and its number of terms, but the degree also tells us something else. The degree tells us a lot about what it's going to look like in the end. And so I just want to run through the degree, and, and I'll put the name with it, and then I want to kind of rough sketch what it's going to look like, because we're going to talk about something called in behavior, and we're going to use this to help us. All right, so tell me if the degree is zero, what, what am I talking about? What's the name? A constant. And what does that look like on a graph? Oh my gosh, on a graph, not the number. There you go, thank you. Something like that, that's exactly right. What if the degree is one? Linear. And what does a linear graph look like? You're actually both right, because it can do this, or it can do this, right? Those are both examples of linear graphs. Do you agree? Why? Oh, okay. How about a degree of two? Quadratic, that's exactly right. And what does that look like? That's that parabola we did, right? And remember that parabola could go up or it could go down. Agreed? All right. Next up. Oh, yep. How about three? Cubic. Cubic. Now, you might not know what this looks like, but you will after today. Now it doesn't always, the humps are not always as pronounced as that, but we can make it, we can start doing our transformations on it to make them kind of pop out for us. But it looks like that, or it could look like that. Starting today. We are, we're going to rely heavily on our calculators. I told you at the beginning of the school to get one. All right, let's go up. What's that power of four called? A quartic. So a quartic graph, and watch this because this is when it starts getting fun.
<laughs> All right, so it could go up or it could go down. But notice I've added another hump on it, right? Now they don't always. I'm I'm really exaggerating the humps on here, but you'll see you'll see why in just a minute. All right, last one that we're going to talk about is five. This is the one that was on your quiz. What's that called? Quintic. That's right, quintic. <laughs> What's happening? Every time I add a degree, what's happening? That's exactly right. I'm, and again, I'm really exaggerating these humps, but I'm adding another hump every time I add another degree. So if I went up to a sixth degree, what do you think the ends would look like? Both ends, if I added another degree here, then both ends are going to go the same way because it's going to add another hump, right? So that's one thing we're going to focus on, and it never, ever, ever goes away, is what we call end behavior, okay? Y'all got this? Uh, by the way, what might cause it to go one way as opposed to the other way? The negative in front. Your eye is really red. Uh, he was so he was smoking so much. <laughs> No, he's got one eye. He's got one eye. Do you have allergies? I don't know. Stop rubbing it. Okay. The number in front determines which way it flips because the number in front will flip it over the y-axis, I mean the x-axis, remember? If I have x squared as opposed to negative x squared, it does this, right? Yes, it does, so yeah, right? So that determines which way it's going. That's why I have two different examples here, okay? All right, let's talk about in behavior. Now, this is going to look completely foreign to you. You've never seen this before. Guarantee you this is... You do? All right. Yeah, you've done this for real, for real? I don't know. It's like, I didn't do anything out of the window. All right. Without actually putting this on a graph, and maybe I should do one that goes opposite directions to start with. Okay, we'll do this one, we'll do this one. All right, this is one you know, right? Without actually putting it on a graph, I know that this is a parabola that opens which way? Up, okay? Average width, so it's going to do something like that, right? So here's what in behavior does. In behavior, describe what? Go ahead. Okay. <laughs> It describes both ends of the graph. How many ends do you see on this graph? Two. So I'm going to have two statements, one that describes both ends, okay? Here's the first one. I'm going to say as x, and then I'm going to do this little arrow. This little arrow means approaches. Approaches means gets closer to heads towards, goes in the direction of. So as x goes towards infinity. Now which way does infinity on the x-axis go? Right. To the right. So this is telling me, look at the right side of the graph. Okay. As x approaches infinity, which means on the right side of the graph, f of x, which f of x is the same thing as what? y. f of x approaches, well, does y, does the graph go up or does it go down? Up. The right side goes up. How can I say up? Positive infinity. So as I look to the right side of my graph, which is here, it goes up. That's math language for, for saying the right side.